Hello everybody, welcome to Sketchcraft Live Art Tips. We're going to do some art tips. we got some questions from the Instagram off the internet. Shit Brandon's written down. So we're just going to talk about So <sighs> to help join in tonight will be Brandon Megatator Jeans. Brandon, say hello. Hello everybody. All right, this, uh, this chair sent me a little lower than normal. Oh, here we go. A little lower than normal. It was funny when I first started, I was actually like this Brandon. Like, watch, I was like. It was like this low. I was like, what the? There's actually a green bar in Rob's room, and he's just actually resting his head on it. I should do it like this room. now, right? So you never know. <laughs> just, just creeping. creeping yeah, just on creeping. The <laughs> Creep craft. <laughs> uh, like there, like, there aren't enough creepers on fucking YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. I got to add to the mix. All right. right. <laughs> All right. If I change this to uh, creepy craft for Halloween next year, it's not going to go well for me, is it? No, it won't. All right, it so won't be, it won't. let's move on. I got my, uh, speaking of Halloween, I have seven pumpkin beers left of my Elysian Night Owl pumpkin ale. <sighs> Counting down. I don't get paid to endorse this shit. It's the only beer I enjoy, so um, I buy about two or three cases of it, and I have one once a week, so I got seven more weeks of this. Uh, my feet are fat. Put it that way. That that being said, this podcast is brought to you by. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's the feet are fat right now, so I'm like, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, Brandon. Brought, brought to you by fat feet. Brought to you by fat feet. All right, so we got a question here. Let me just bring up a couple things from Instagram. I'll start off with this one. Um, let's go to Cintiq. Oh, large. I screenshotted this. With, look at my six percent phone battery left right <laughs> at 911.com oh shit so here's the question uh hello mr sketchcraft big fan over here with one question what artists slash companies slash websites besides deviantart or tumblr slash books such as uh loomis or blair preston blair courses would you recommend to see or follow as references for us art beginners Love your work. All the best. Julian. Oh, man. So, let me cut back to camera. Uh, all right. So, this is this is a multifaceted question, huh, Brandon? Right. Um, I'll start off with this because you might ramble on. So, yeah. for beginners, I'm, I'm, I'm developing, uh, some 10 minute videos like maximum 10 minutes uh, videos about the process I think you should take right as an artist like step one this here's how long you should probably spend doing that step two this step three this come back in a year step four this you know what I mean like I want to <laughs> like for real like there's like there's gonna be times you're just gonna have to you know if you don't fucking you know, achieve what you want to go back to this step kind of like thing. And I'm plotting it out. It's going to take, it's going to take a little while because those aren't going to be done live. I'm going to have to actually record this bullshit and edit it together. All right. Um, but I do want to put that on there and do a whole playlist of that over the next couple of years so that that's there. But I'm going to assume you're just starting out. Like, you know, you're 14, 15, or maybe you're 35, whatever. And you're like, I want to learn how to draw. You know, and to that end, you know, first I would say, you know, do you want to learn, if you want to learn how to draw, then put away the fan art, put away, you know, your comic books, put away your concept art books, put away all that stuff that inspired you to want to draw in the first place, right? Because right. what happens is you got to say that's all production art and production art is art that's made with time constraints and feedback and iteration and sales nonsense and i had a spicy burrito and i drew that leg all fucked up that night but oh well it's done right like it's not right. representative of the best Process. one yeah the best one can do or the skill set you're just seeing what that person can do within all these constraints you know and that requires a certain level of expertise you have to have like, like imagine you have to have like a giant energy tank, Brandon, and every mm -hmm. every deadline, every constraint, every rule is just like, and you you got to get that, you got to get like in Zelda, you got to get a lot of hearts, man. 
you got three hearts when you start out, you're just going to get wiped out. <laughs> start all the way back from the beginning. You got to build up those hearts. How to build up those hearts is really simple. Pick out what you want to do first. Do you want to draw like with your hand, like with pencil? Do you want to paint? And I really say those are two separate things. You know, they go hand in hand, essentially. But um, <clears throat> one is about line art, construction form, perspective, lines, grids, all this stuff. The other one is about rendering light and the way light curves over surfaces. Now, it helps to understand the three-dimensionality of that surface. So, you know, take some entry-level construction, go into painting if you want to be more of a digital painter. If you want to be more of an illustrator, focus more on the drawing side. To do that, I recommend a couple things I'm going to bring up right now. Like, again, I don't get any money for this. Um, this is just steps that I ended up finding this stuff when, not so much when I was learning, like I'd already been doing it for a while, but I was like, oh, if I had had that shit, that would have been right. great, you know? And by the way, folks, I don't do a pre-pro meeting or anything. I just do this shit all live right here. So, Yeah. So I'm going to bring up Scott Robertson's Nomon DVDs. Back in 2004, Scott Robertson is a super professional illustrator uh, from Pasadena. I don't know if he's from Pasadena, but, you know, the Pasadena College of Arts is really his primarily mm -hmm. hail from. He's been in Hollywood. So we can go to the Cintiq. This is his Nomon workshop page. And back in 2004, when Nomon first started doing their DVDs, let me bring desktop ahead so you can see me. So when Nomon was starting to do your DVDs, look, I'm right next to Scott. That's that's Scott right there. Uh, <laughs> um, they came out with this stuff. And this is the one I really recommend. Basic Perspective Form Drawing from Scott Robertson. I um, have this one. Yeah, you have this one. Now, you're going to see there's a preview, an introduction, drawing mechanics, one-point perspective, two-point perspective, three-point perspective, foreshortening, ellipses. If you just try to watch this whole thing and think you're going to download this fucking information, you're fucked. It's not how yeah. it works. <laughs> like, really just start with the first three chapters for, like, a month, you know, and then move on to the two-point, you know, for, like, another month. And then go back to one point, then back to two point, then back to one point, then, then go up to three point, then go back down over a period of like a year, then move into some foreshortening, learning how to draw from center, uh, learning how to construct three dimensionally. Because you want to, what you're really trying to do isn't just be able to draw well. If you're like, Rob, I don't want to draw cars and buildings and, and ships like this, I, I want to draw like Superman flying around. You need to train your brain to think three dimensionally. Um, it's going to be the real, the thing that's the hardest thing to learn is your brain wants to th see things flat like this, right? Because maybe because we live in a hologram, who knows? Um, this is why when you draw, this is why I really am against when you do character designs, doing everything symmetrically flat. Because first off, we're not symmetrical. And second of all, when you draw like this, the minute you start to rotate things, you're going to find serious problems with your designs and so now the whole fucking internet's moving on i got a symmetrical brush so i just gotta draw half the character and it duplicates the other half for me and i'm like that you know guys you're just doing yourself a disservice like it's a temporary fix like you're saving 15 minutes or an hour whatever let's say an hour it's not let's say you you you're probably saving like 10 minutes feels like an hour Right. The downside is later on, somewhere down the way, you're going to need to be able to draw both sides three-dimensionally. But you need to learn this three-dimensional stuff. I also recommend um, from the same thing, from the Gnome on. These are old DVDs, by the way. Not any of their new stuff. Their new stuff is all, I don't, don't really. Uh, all of their new stuff's really, like, complex. Like, I'm just going back. So... I think Feng Shu had some real intro ones back in the day. Um, this one right here. I'll show this one. Here it is on. I own all these, by the way, physically. Uh, the physical DVDs. Techniques of Feng Shu. Fundamentals of shot design for environments. And this is like doing these little yeah. thumbnails. Like hand drawing these little thumbnails. Um, one of the things that he talks about in this DVD uh, that I really, really did actually did actually help um, was 
me go back to the art of saying was the ghosting technique. So the ghosting technique is where you you draw a point. Like let me let me see here. It's well, it's kind of hard. So you draw a point on a piece of paper here and a point here, like an inch apart. And then you you take a pen and you kind of like tap, 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 tap a few times, and then starting Just at the tap. original line. Shut up, Brandon. When you tie on, when you don't not when I'm doing this. When you start at your original line, you keep your eye on the other dot, and then you draw a line straight to it, and you go further out and further out and further out. And what that's going to do is help teach you to draw straight-ish lines. It really helps increase your line quality. So when you see me sketching or inking like these things, you, I, very rarely do I bust out a ruler mostly for like really long distances like a straight edge like like a long sword that's going to go halfway across the page because right you know there's only so much fucking you know you can only go so far and so far so with that but a lot of those extra lines it's, it's these little zips and um those little dots you can do anywhere so when i was taking like gen ed classes in college i was doing the two dots when i was stuck at the dmv i was doing the two dots on my work break at kinko's while i was eating my tomato can of tomato soup you know uh i was doing the two dots and doing the construction and the perspective teaching myself to understand how to build the volume that i can then place the characters in so short answer is scott robertson's fundamentals of perspective Fang Shu. Fundamentals of shot design for environments. And we'll have links in the info box. Yes. If you want to learn how to paint after that, get back to me and we'll, we'll move on there. But I, I'm telling you, those two things over a period of two, uh, just give it give it six to eight months and you're going to see much better up here. You know, But it takes a long time. I think that's the other thing you got to understand. Like beginners think, oh, if I just do this for a month or two months or a year or two years, that's going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. You may never attain the level of skill that is necessary to make it as a professional illustrator full-time at a comic book company. Um, and it has nothing to do with whether you're a good artist or not. That actually has more to do with the kind of art they're looking to sell, the amount of details, the people they already got doing it, taking in the factor that there are always going to be people better than you. You know, like I'm not the world's greatest artist. I'm never going to be the world's greatest artist, but I have a, a type of art that I want to make and I enjoy making. And so I've focused on that. And I think you need to try to ask yourself, what, what do you feel when you're starting out? What do you feel your end goal is going to be? You know, and then moving toward it. If you want to work in games, you're going to also need to learn some 3D. Do you want to do environments or characters? And you need to pick one and start there. Period. If it's characters, learn realistic anatomy, ZBrush modeling. If it's environments, build up your sketching, your painting, and then start modeling trees. Learn what are they doing? They're doing that all that in Maya these days. Maya, mm -hmm. I used to do in 3D Studio Max with that, but Maya made some SketchUp. So like you're gonna, and then down the fucking four years from now, it can change, right? So four years from now, this video is definitely going to be irrelevant in terms of that process because there could be VR tools. You've seen like the HTE Vive, right? Where they're sculpting in VR with ribbons and shit. And, you know, like it's all changing, you know. But uh, in terms of turning this into a professional job, there's always going to be some technical level of skill you're going to have to have. Art fundamentals won't be enough for a full-time gig. Now, if you want to move into fine arts and sell stuff in galleries and stuff like that, then absolutely, you're never going to have to worry about that. Um, but starting out drawing, perspective, construction, and it's not glamorous, dude. I'm going to tell you now, you're not going to get a bunch of Instagram likes. You're not going to get a bunch of Twitter, not going to get much of Facebook. It's going to seem kind of boring. Brandon, I've been making you do this for about a year, year and a half now, mm -hmm. and you're still on the one DVD, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you got to, you got to really... I say this wholeheartedly. You got to fall in love with the process. It's boring. It sucks. You're not going to like it. You're going to be like, no, I want to draw Batman. You're not going to want to sit there and draw straight lines, straight lines, straight lines, straight lines. But I'll say this. When a year ago, I would try to make a short line or a quick sketch as far as from one point to another, I was nervous as shit. I'd be sweating all over the page. 
Now, when I'm going to draw something, I'm more confident that I can sit there and ghost the line, which is where you pre-do it, you pre-practice the line, you go left to right, left to right, and then you finally put your real line down. And there's a little bit more confidence. I'm still not there, and I still need to put a lot more time into it. Um, things happen, you know, life, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But you have to find time to just put in this little work, and it's going to suck. It's like going to the gym or cooking. You're not going to be good at it first, but, you know, you do it enough times, and eventually things are going to start to click, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, this is how I do it. Muscle memory, I got this. So it it's not fun. It's not glamorous. It's not going to get you likes on Instagram. It's not going to get you people going, wow, that is really good. That's a really good straight line. But a year from now, when you go to actually make some dope art, it's going to it's going to show more confidence in your lines. So I've got a question. Can I make from the chat room? Comes uh, Chris Dibbern wants to know if he can make it as a pro artist at 38. The answer is, yeah, anyone can do whatever they really, really want to do. As you get older, what happens is, you build up, it's, it's kind of better when you're younger and you're kind of naive, you know? As you get older, you're like, I don't want, I got to spend my whole weekend doing what, you know, like for who, what's due, you know? So, like, you got to, like, be willing to not uh, be set in your, <laughs> what do I say, uh, your personal likes and wants in life and stuff you're gonna have to let some things go when you go to plus i think the thing to remember art no matter what age you are is a fantastic side business no matter what i recommend look when you go and you're working all day you come home you're tired you don't want to work but you want to know something like that it's not working when i came home from school when i was a kid get all my chores done i'd sit down race to draw that was when i escaped you got to start right. thinking about that creative thing is not more work but escape what makes it harder is when that work is for someone else. So I think if you're getting older, you might, for your own sanity, want to spend that time uh, beyond developing your own skills, developing your own things so that's what you're working on. And then, you know, I always like to vary it up. A little bit of commissions, a little bit of production work, like a comic book or cover art or pinups, whatever you want to do. Um, and a little bit of commission. So you're bringing money in, right? And I do the commissions all traditional. So I'm working on traditional stuff. And then with the production, I'm doing digital. And then I'm doing traditional. And then I'm doing digital. Then I'm doing traditional. Um, this way you can give yourself a $10,000. Like I always say, focus on like your goal as a side business is to make an extra 10 grand a year minimum. Like at least that, right? That that would be a nice goal. Brandon, wouldn't you like an extra 10 grand? I would love And it. all you had to do was come home and not sit in front of that Xbox all fucking night? Yes. That's all you had to do, right? Yeah. You could spend ten grand buying loot boxes, or you can make ten grand elsewhere. <laughs> right. You know, being creative yeah. and shit. And that, I just think, that, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, like, Chris, you're 38, but this is a dumb comparison. But I heard this just the other day. Didn't Colonel Sanders start KFC when he was like 40? He didn't start cooking until he was 40, and didn't get franchised until he was like 60. There is. I love to equate food to drawing, yes. but there is a fundamental difference. You know, um, in a lot of different ways, obviously, like owning a restaurant ain't the same as owning art supplies. Like you're going to probably go bankrupt. If I you have, have faith restaurant. in you, Chris. What I would say, Chris, is, is get those fundamentals down and start to maneuver on the Internet. Right. Because if you start spending money on tables at cons, you're, it's just going to be a scene. You're going to have to spend your vacation days from work traveling to cons. You're going to have to spend your free time and your free money or out right of your own pocket to try to put up the upfront cost for con tables that you're not going to make back. Start to develop a footprint on the internet. And then get out to your local comic book shop, get out to your local coffee shop, get out to a local whatever, put up your pop art, whatever you want to do, but put that start become a little bit of a local person if you can. You know. Right. Um and then Kyle says the new sketch room looks so empty. Uh new sketch room won't be filling up much. That's going to get filled up when I unbox all the the books and back here I'll probably put when Game Cave issue one's done, I'll put the Game Cave thing back there. But this room where I work in is empty. Like <laughs> it's just some tables here and this. And that's that's the dream. All my packing and other shit's out into another room. So we got another question. I'd say that's pretty good, right? We did that for 20 yeah. minutes. 
Let me bring this one's going to be a little bit long here. So uh, let me. That's what Brandon said. So um, Fala scene three feet three four five says I really admire your work and talent and skills. I okay. I wish I could get people information. What if you come back? I'm trying to teach myself to get better. I imagine artistically. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to know if there are any resources or guides you recommend to reach my level. Oh, this is like the same question. I also like to know the amount of work. You okay. I also like to know the amount of work. Okay. How about this? Would I recommend any guides to reach my level of skill? See the first 20 minutes of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then get back to the second part. 20 minutes later. Um, I would also like to know the amount of work you put in daily to get better. Over a span of two years, am I self-taught or did I go to a specific school? What are the resources that I utilize to get better? Um, the amount of work I put in daily to get better over my first two years. Hmm. Mm. Let me open up Photoshop. New. Uh, this paper. Let's see if I, this this works. Where's my pen? Oh, it's, under, it's right under the Cintiq. Isn't that always great? <laughs> yes. So, all right. Uh, let's just talk about that for a little bit. So, I made the the decision to become an artist when I was in junior high, specifically. Uh, not elementary, fifth grade. Um, decided to get into comic books around the junior high when I saw the Turtles, and definitely 1992 when Image Comics came out. I knew that you could make real money doing that too. It wasn't just these two guys doing the Turtles that were big. Um, but I did not. How do I say this? I did not take my first real leap of. <laughs> I didn't abandon life and pursue this until specifically uh, October, it was October 12th, 1997. I know it was October 12th because it was two days after my birthday and I went to the mall with a friend and she said she wanted to buy me a book. So a high school friend. And, uh, I saw The Power of Myth, which is a series of interviews that Bill Moyers did with uh, Joseph Campbell, the guy who wrote the book, The Hero of the Thousand Faces. And I know that Joseph Campbell at the time had influenced Star Wars, and the special edition had just come back out. And so I wanted to see what this Joseph Campbell guy had to say. I first looked through A Hero with the Thousand Faces, and it was like, it's, it's this fucking thick. I, I own it. But I was like, I'm not prepared for that. So I just read the interview. That forced me to rethink everything. And... Um, Left my girlfriend, left my work, left everything by June of 1998. I moved out, went to my cousin's place up in Montana, sat down with three months worth of money and just decided to draw my, I wanted to draw my comic. It's called My Story because mm -hmm. I can't think of a better fucking name. Just some kids that run around the park and get into trouble with monsters and shit. Kind of like Stranger Things, but this is 1998, right? <laughs> so, um... Let's say that that's when I started drawing every day for certain, not just randomly. June of 98. Two years after that would be June of 2000. By June of 2000, I was not that much further along. Okay? Um, I had joined the Army in September of 98, went to Germany uh, the January of... 99 and sat down to reteach myself well i actually wrote this script for my story to be like okay, i did this comic it didn't really work very well I wrote a whole script realized i couldn't draw anything i wrote and then just i couldn't draw anything i didn't know how i could see it all up here and i could write it but i couldn't draw cars bikes a whole town making kids i didn't have no idea how to color it i didn't have a computer I knew about Photoshop because I'd used it in high school. I knew that, you know, Top Cow used it to color their comics. Um, I had seen Brian Haberlin do it once or twice at Con and asked him some questions, but I did not know how to do that. I didn't know anything about a Wacom tablet or how to even get one. 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> there were no resources. There were only one person on the internet talking about art at the time, the kind we make, and his name was Francis Sai, or T-S-A-I, Francis. Um, and he passed away a couple years ago, sadly. He had some weird disease, became couldn't move his hands or anything. He had to, like, draw with his eyes. It's fucking wow. heartbreaking. I think his name, I think the site was called Polycarbon. Um, so I sat down to learn perspective. It just wasn't enough. I didn't make real headway with this until roughly June of 2004. It's about the time that I was able to put a lot of this together. You know, I could draw from, I could find center across any box. I could animate, rotate. It took me really from 1998 to 2004, which is like a six year period, right? Yeah. 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 It's a good chunk. Right? To, to get to an acceptable level of like, I guess I could kind of start. And even then, I didn't produce a single piece of work that I was proud of until Mosaic, which was three years later, 2007. And I didn't produce, I'll just say June, because it usually happens around June. And I didn't produce my first cover art that I was 100% proud of until that enslaved cover, which was June 2010 or 11. I'm getting fuzzy on that now because those years were crazy. I think that was 11. I think that was 2011. So I did not achieve the ability to do what I always wanted to do for almost a 10-year period. Oh, wow. Now, how much was I doing that every day, right? At mm -hmm. first, well, this three-month period, I was doing it every day, nonstop. I just drew, bathed, made dinner, slept, drew, bathed, made dinner, slept. I didn't go anywhere. My cousin just let me live in her apartment, whatever, until she moved out. Um, and then in the Army, it's the only thing I did in my room during the week. And then on the weekends, I played video games because uh, I was probably going to have CQ duty or fire guard is what they call it where you have to sit there and check people in and you're up all night. So I made that my game nights and I would take other people's CQ duty and have them pay me and give me a free pizza. So I'd make extra money on the side <laughs> doing that. And then I'd sit there playing video games. Um, and then, you know, trying to practice just basic perspective and construction. Um, I'd say a minimum of two to three hours every day. That's how long it took me. Now with this podcast like this, and with YouTube available now and all the information on the internet, I don't think it would take me that long to get there given the amount of resources there are available to get questions answered. Mm -hmm. Especially if you came here and I'm able to like give you my 100%. I think if you listen to what I said and you actually follow through on it and you're very critical of what you're doing and you're comparing what you're doing to an industry standard, not comparing it to, you know, I'm proud of me because I did some shit, you know, stuff. If you're actually pushing yourself, probably more like you're going to need four years. I'd say four years minimum to make a big dif difference. Mm -hmm. But it's totally attainable. And that's with a life. I had joined the army. I had come back. I'd gotten full-time work. I was going to college. That's with all that other stuff, four years. You know, maybe you get it down to three or two, given the internet, but there's, it's just a certain time in, it's like, you're not going to be able to just start making money playing the guitar your first two years. I don't see how, right, right. Brandon? Like you, you got to build the calluses on your fingers and thumbs and stuff. My, 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 my half brother plays the guitar for a living and his hands look horrible. I have smooth hands, folks. Like see this? I've never had to do hard manual labor. Even have. in the army, I wear my gloves all the time, Brandon. Like, <laughs> yeah, you don't have working man hands. No, I wore all gloves in the army, and then I got, always got my my ass in front of a computer, you know. So, <laughs> aside from the tanks, the tanks were the only thing I did in the army. That's that wasn't fun, but I always wore my gloves. So, luckily, I was stationed in Germany when it was mostly cold. So, but um, but yeah, so it's gonna take two years is not enough, you know. And if that's intimidating, then go ahead and give up now, and then come back in a few months. Come back, and you'll start over. Come back, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have wasted that time that you gave up. You'll so wish. I used to yell at Brandon like two years ago. I'm like, I don't know why you're waiting to start. I've told you what to do. Yeah. You're just delaying. Don't you wish you had started when I told you? Yes, Rob. Don't you, Brandon? Like, but legit, beyond no, just I, me no, being I, able I, to go. I, go ahead. Legit. Just like I said, you have to fall in love 
with the process. The two years ago, you know, I would do some art, play some video games, blah blah blah. I had to really this last year just get in a fucking groove of this is my routine, this is my life. I either do it or I fucking don't. So now I go to work all day at my shitty day job. I come home, I have my meal with my wife. I sometimes I go to the gym, do a quick gym visit, whatever I gotta do, and then I sit down for three to three hours either working on thumbnails for Rob, working on my line practice, working on sketch cover commissions that I have. And I don't have a lot of commissions, but I'm thankful for the ones I do because it's allowing me to grow as an artist, but also put out content. So I know I'm not going to work for DC or Marvel. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with my situation in my art life. I accept it. It's cool. I'm thankful that anyone is willing to spend their money on me. And so I'm, I'm willing to take the time that I need to put in so I give them better art. And I, I'm thankful people bought art in my past, but I look at that art and I'm like, man, they were really nice. They must have just liked me as a person and not me as an artist. Cause well, Ashley and I had bad. a conversation loosely based on that. The last one we did, uh, the previous video was commissions with Gang Feather. Mm-hmm. And I was talking about like somebody wanted to know about pricing. And I'm like, this isn't, these are commissions. I'm not charging, f- whether I spend an hour or six hours. It's really on me. However, what you're buying is the quality. Commissions are about quality. So, you know, if you're like, I'm going to charge them an hourly rate, they're immediately going to know, well, just just, just doesn't have to be that good. You know, they're always going to want to spend the least amount of money. So just pick the level of quality you want to work at and get very efficient at doing that. And if that takes you two hours, then that's a two-hour process. Don't turn a two-hour process into a 20 hour process but if something takes 20 hours like the uh, princess leia cover took 100 hours you know there's no way around that if i even if i digitally painted it you can't digitally paint the box art it all has to be drawn you know it's like some things take a certain amount of time that's how long they took to do figure out the level of quality you want to produce and hit that i mean just just being able to do that like just being able to conjure up in your head like case in point you know just to kind of give you an example like just to this this right here this cover i just did for mega visions like this i is i always wanted to be able to make the kind of art that was like on the playstation magazine covers that i used to buy in like the mid 90s yes. and i'm yes. like brandon this is that right yeah oh yeah right this, has that feel. this is a. Uh... Very Sub Zero Joe Mad. That feel of a mix of digital with with pencil. It has that grit to it. And Without it redrawing Joe Mad's art, I'm not sitting right, there with right. a bunch of Joe Mad comics trying to be no. Joe Mad. You know, like oh, that's that's where I took the foot. Remember that time Joe Mad drew a Dreamcast? No, you know, like, like it's just this. But but I have to do all the steps: draw, ink it, flat colors, pre pro. And the fact that I colored this in eight hours, taking my sweet ass time, baffles me. You know, mm-hmm. like I consider that that's that that means I know fifteen year old Rob would be like, he'd give me a giant hug. You know, if like Stranger Things Rob could run over and see this, you know, <laughs> he'd be like, you did it. You know, so Stranger Stranger Craft, yeah, Stranger Craft. You know, so you know, but I can't see how to color that in four. I just can't. Mm-hmm. You, I can with less, but not with the bounce lights. Not with now. I wouldn't want to do a whole comic like that because it's kind of overkill. But I, for covers, I love the look of it. You know, like it's just right. It's just it's just what I'm trying to do. Um, in terms of the four year process, I'm in the middle of a four year process right now. It's called Game Cave. Like, if you guys see the 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 playlist, Game Cave Game Cave uh, Devlog. Um, you can see the last time I updated that was six months ago. I've been working on it every day. You just mm-hmm. I can't post devlogs on like story and world building. I kind of re had to reset what I this is the third iteration of Game Cave. And it's it's happening, folks. Like it's not just, oh, it's up here. It's like I had to assemble all these. I, I have to take my art, how I draw, how I color, assemble it in a certain way, how I write, write, write. I wrote the whole thing as a novel. It was too many words. Broke it back down to a comic book script. It's kind of going backwards. Like I had to like figure out the right combination, and then also make certain it's the fucking thing I wanted to make. Took it's taken four years to figure this fucking thing out, you know. And I don't know if I'll ever make my money back on that. Probably not. I don't give a shit. 
I know this, for me, the fact that it's going to look, read, and be exactly what I had imagined. And with my head, you know, loosely in that vague ether, you know, and you're kind of like, you got an idea for something, but you kind of know what it is, but you don't know, you know, and can it go the distance? You're going to get bored with it. And like, after four years, I'm not bored one bit. I'm more excited now than I was even two years ago. Like, but that comes from going through the process, fundamental structure, you know, and there's different things to do with writing too, which, you know, eventually, you know, if people like my writing, they'll ask me, how did you do that? And then I'll point in the right direction. If they hate it, then I'll be like, I don't know what I was doing. Can't write. I'm an artist. Um, Comic legend in the chat room says it's never too late. Jack Kirby was 44 years old when he drew the first issue of Fantastic Four. Yeah, and that's like in the '60s, '40s, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're in your '40s and the '60s, I mean, oof, that's like being in your '60s now, right? They didn't I mean, look too they're good. Like, they're looking at him like, "You give up, old man? What are you doing?" Yeah, they um, they lived hard. <laughs> so, so I got a, I got a question. All right, you know, and this kind of what we're talking about now about never too late and also kind of it reminds me of like how do I say this? not giving up but when you're working on that piece you just showed you know you got to a point where you were working on it digitally and you realized that you have to give up working on it digitally and go back to how you're doing it traditionally hmm. i mean is there a point where somebody needs to realize that okay this isn't working but still find a way to progress like i mean what made you just go like fuck it? This is taking too long. Like, is that was that it? Because it was taking too long. So what Brandon is saying is he's bringing up mm-hmm. this point. So we'll go back to the Mega Visions cover. So if you guys go back a few videos, and we'll, I'll have them posted. You know, um, I'll, I'll get them up. Yeah, they'll be. Up. So I was working on this, and the goal for me was to I was going to draw it all with this pencil brush I'd been working on. And I just did my last cover for Tom. Um. My last cover for Tom with this pencil brush. And the reason why is I wanted that smooth kind of half tony feel in the pencil brush. Um, and I try to use these covers as a way to develop uh, different techniques. And so I did this cover for Tom, which I'll show you first. So let me go over to the, well, let me just, I'll bring up my DeviantArt, right? Because it's, it's in the DeviantArt. I want to go all the way up to here. So I did this digitally. These are all digital pencils. And I figured, oh, I can just draw this cover like this. But maybe there's some more grit and stuff. And what ended up happening was, I I thought I'd be done with this Friday. Um, Come come Monday night, I wasn't anywhere near done. I got to, I'll load this up. Where is it? Lines here. I save every version. So this is how far I got. And look, it was looking fine, you know? But it was Mm -hmm. like three days to get this far, guys. I I drew and inked this whole piece from scratch, starting over, in eight hours. Okay? And it was three days of this. This isn't even hard for me to draw. Even, like, if I was doing digital inks, it would have been done in, like, 12 hours. So what happens is, is my process just isn't ready... Whatever I was trying to do, it wasn't functioning, you know, obviously. And one of the things, like, I always try to relate drawing, like what we do, kind of to cooking in a way, because you watch MasterChef. It's it's not like what we do, but it's the closest thing to it. Only they can do it under extreme pressure. We can't. Right. But we're still building upon things, upon things, upon things. Yeah, especially with graphic design and everything. But anyway, so there's this part you see, like, when they're doing personal challenges, where they got to, like, pressure test and MasterChef where they get an idea what they want their dish to be and it ain't working out too well. And you're seeing it ain't working out too well. And you wonder, is that just bad, clever editing? But then the right. judges come by and they're like, it's not working. And if you watch MasterChef Australia, which is the one I watch, uh, which is fucking amazing, it's 60 to 80 episodes per season. They've been doing it for 10 years and it's it's f- super positive and you know, it's not just, it's not them getting yelled at, but so and you could really see more of the cook because they take their time showing you 40 minutes worth of cooking, you know, and the people that tend to not get thrown off that show are the ones that take their advice and adjust. Even if they got to make the thing from scratch, you know, move a little quicker, whatever they got to do, they stop, address the fact that it's a problem and fix it. 
The ones mm. that fail nine times out of nine point nine fucking times out of ten are the ones that are like, well, it's just gonna have to work, and it never works. And so this right. was a situation. This was a situation where I was like, I gotta stop. So I stopped. I got my printer. One of the reasons why I was doing this too, they didn't have my printer hooked back up. So I had to re-network my printer and all that fucking nonsense. Got it all set up and drew these lines traditionally. It should load up in a second. In eight hours. You know? This I already that shit done. This I already know how to do because I've been doing it for the past year. And this came as a response to when I first laid out my Darksiders piece about a, year, a little over a year ago. And I was like, I have no idea how I'm going to get that done. <laughs> so I thought it would be cool to try this pencil texture look, but it doesn't work. From now on, I'm not doing any more of this thing. I think the shading looks cool for hair. This other shit is pointless. It's just going to turn to black anyway. So I'm going to go back to my... If I'm going to do this sort of thing, it'll be digital inks like I did the Game Informer cover because it's super fucking fast. That right. being said, other than that, this works just fine for Rob, man. Like, I get I'm not the world's greatest inker, and, you know, it's all loosey-goosey and shit, but, you know, man, whatever. That got done in eight hours, and this got done in eight hours, you know? Right. So, and it was just really fucking annoying that I had to, like, I texted my client, and, you know, I when I'm really mad, I use that voice-to-text thing, because I, I, I don't want to type. <laughs> And I'll read back to what I wrote because it was hilarious. So I wrote, uh, I wrote, uh, it was funny. I said, hey, dude, I made a colossal mistake trying to eat this with the digital pencil brush. So I'm going to turn out and you can manually and get it done like I did issues or two. Sorry for the trouble. My bad. <laughs> like I didn't even proofread that shit. You know, like, I was so mad. I'm yeah. like, that, I just sent it. He'll get it. And I sent a photo of the, the work. And he, he replies, uh, hey, Rob, not quite sure I understand the last text. What's happening? So I had sent him some updated pics, and I called him. And I was like, hey, yeah, so obviously that voice to text thing isn't perfect. And explain to him the situation, you know. So it's knowing what process works for what result. You know, for these covers, that thick kind of whatever, this works just fine. For the multi-character things where I need like 8 to 25 characters, it's going to be the digital inks. Because I need to be able to zoom in and get all the characters drawn. And to do that on the paper and meet any kind of like recognition of that character, is, you got to blow the paper up. And so it's just easier to do that digital. Um, and you got now you have a traditional copy of it that can go in your store, and someone could probably. Get well, it. I always have a traditional copy, even when I do the other way. I print it out and then redraw it. <laughs> like, so I always have one. You know, right. like like it doesn't matter if you draw it first or draw it after. It's just the one you drew. It's irrelevant. So, um, but I always do that. Uh, but yeah, this is more efficient because I'm doing that and not having to go back. You know, on the other hand, being able to go back is a great way to warm up in the morning when you don't want to have to think. <laughs> you just got to copy your pencils. Don't make multiple copies. Just do the one, folks. You know, like, you know, just the one you made. Um, but, yeah, so so that was this process. Uh, where are we at? We're at the 45-minute mark. We got another question really quick, Brandon. Is there anything else? Um, I got two things. I'm not sure which one. Give me, give, read them both, and we'll pick one. All right. One has to do with, I hate saying this term, uh, selling out. And the other one has to do with artist fatigue. <laughs> How are they not intrinsically linked? <laughs> we'll probably end up doing both. So just start with the selling out one, because I'm. Uh, what are you okay. talking about? I hate, I, hate, I hate that term. And I don't. I don't. I don't. I got a feeling this is going to go on bad. Hold on. Let me grab the beard and you talk. Go ahead. <laughs> So there's um, artists that come up with certain brushes or things or products, and after they become very popular and they share it a lot, you know, they get to cash in or, you know, make a little profit off it and sell it out to a, a bigger company. And then a lot of us then can't afford it or can't use it after that point. You're talking about and Kyle's brushes. I'm talking about Kyle's brushes, yes. You're talking about Kyle's brushes. <laughs> and 
So, you know, he, he made brushes, you know, they were available. And then I, I well, hold on, pause things. there. All right. So people, there's a guy named Kyle T. Web, Webs, what's it called? Kyle's brushes. Let me type in Kyle's. I'll show you folks, right? It's easier to show than to talk about. So go here, we'll type Kyle's brushes. Kylebrush.com. So Kyle, this is a pretty cool dude who's been making these brushes for Photoshop. Version mm -hmm. CS, at least CS5 and above before. Really artistic brushes. Um, my pencil to brush is based off one of his. It's got a lot of my own tricks and stuff, but he had the basis for it. Uh, really great stuff. So the thing is, he recently took all the brushes off and he made them exclusive. He signed a deal with Adobe and now they're exclusive through the Adobe Creative Cloud. I'm excited to find sure that I'm joining Adobe and my brush is now exclusively part of the Creative Cloud. Let's learn more. What does that mean? It means that if you have Adobe Photoshop, anything under CC, here we go, Kyle's brush exclusive, anything under CC, you, you better hope you save them because you're never going to get to use them ever again. And uh, he's caught yeah. some shit for this, you know, and I, I yeah. don't know, man. I mean, he spent a lot of years developing all these things, you know. Um, right. He's put in the time. He's put in the work. Right. So. But he has ca caught a lot of shit from people, you know, that. The problem that it, isn't that he signed a deal. The problem is every piece of software. You used to spend a amount of money on software and then you made stuff and made your money back. Now every right. bit of software is becoming a service. Software as a service. And so you got a monthly fee for Photoshop. You got a monthly fee for this. You got a monthly fee for that. With Photoshop, I own CS5. Um, I got it for like 375 or something. Whatever it was at the time. It's like three commissions, folks. You know, just put the fucking money in. I don't care if it's 100 commissions, you know. Three, so I use Photoshop. So I'm not using... You have CC. You guys pay how much a year? 120 a year? I don't know. You making Just 120 a year right now, Brian? Definitely uh, not when you go back. How long have you been doing it? Hey, if you guys would like to go to my Instagram and my Etsy <laughs> store, <laughs> that would help me pay for my CC. Brandon, please. you should sell some shit out, right? You should sell yeah. out. <laughs> if you sold out, you could afford that Photoshop. You see what I'm saying? So it's not like the guy sold something. It's, it does suck that whatever he makes in the future, I'm not going to be able to access. Right. So you're then I'm stuck with one of two options, right? Subscribe to Adobe CC, which I'm not going to do. Nope. Um, for a lot of reasons, the primary being that I'm not paying a monthly subscription for fucking Adobe's products that may or may not break any fucking time they update them. Case in point, even with CS6, uh, I use fonts in Photoshop, especially working in t-shirts and graphic design. I quickly need to render fonts in Photoshop, convert them to smart objects and do, uh, effects and, and new, new fonts, whatever you want, new logo types. And the font system in CS6 has a glitch where you'll start to do things like you'll be typing at an exclamation point and it'll put the exclamation point at the front of the fucking sentence. It's a weird bug. And like, we fixed it with CC. You go up to CC and then half the time, Brandon's computer drops pressure sensitivity. Right, Brandon? Mm -hmm. yeah, I yeah. spent six hours, what, three weeks ago, fixing Brandon's pressure sensitive to pressure sensitivity on a Cintiq because of CC. Mm-hmm. It's a CC issue. CS5 works. You know, so it's just like, now if I really want the pencil thing and my brush ain't working, guess what I do? I just print the shit out and draw it with the fucking pencil. Like, they're just, <laughs> you know. So it's unfortunate because the other option is that you got to find another program. Clip Studio Paint, right. uh, Sci Power Tool, whatever else you want to use, you know. And the reason why I use Photoshop isn't because I'm like, it's the greatest ever. It's kind of clunky in a lot of ways. That being said, it's the industry standard tool when you go somewhere. If you're working from home, most artists are probably using Clip Studio Paint in conjunction with Photoshop. Usually Clip Studio Paint to draw, Photoshop to color. I've learned to do everything in Photoshop because anywhere I went to work, 
that's what they use. You know, and so it just sucks when you had a guy producing great content that you're not going to be able to access anymore unless you get in on the monthly plan, which I'm not going to do. Now, I guess at a job it wouldn't matter because Dell have the CC. If they're available from Adobe, then I can probably just download them with the thumbs up from the IT guy. So there you go. Right. You know, but um, I think you know he definitely. I I hope he definitely got a nice payday out of it because the dude's put in the fucking time. You know, they're they're right. really great brushes. Um, but I guess I'm definitely just gonna have to get really good if I ever use more than what I'm using now. Like <laughs> it's gonna have to. Be. I think. See, I think more people are upset because it's it's such an it's an exclusive. You know, an exclusives always suck because you have to have the certain product. As to where if he would have sold these brushes, let's say on. I, I know you don't like Patreon, but let's say Patreon or some kind of share share site where Stop. he made I like money. Patreon. The problem I have is when Patreon's <laughs> getting used for things that go beyond what I believe the intent of it to do is. Okay. You know, and it turns into every artist I know is spamming me to support their Patreon. And the most they're making is a few hundred bucks a month. And they could have just made that in commissions and never had to have the Patreon. Right. Like it's this thing where we feel as though everything we do is now going to cost us a monthly fee, yeah. right? We all feel it, right? Like Disney announces a streaming service with a new Star Wars live action show. You fucking know you're going to have to get that fucking shit, you know? <laughs> uh, you like Clip Studio Paint? They just put it on the iPad. But guess what? You have to have $8 a month subscription. Can't just buy it <sighs> on the iPad, you know? That's what I'm saying. So... You know, if he would have, I wonder, I mean, I'm hoping he got a good chunk amount of money where versus if he would have tried to sell the brushes on his own where he didn't maybe have the same audience. But it just, it's hard when you know there's exclusives. You have to have this, you have to have this, to have that. Like, well, Adobe's got have, money. You know where they're located? Uh, California, San Diego. No, they're oh. located in Utah. So when I was driving down to your oh. place, north, you come in from Salt Lake City, they're right when you come in there. It's a nice, nice nice new building <laughs> you're like there's where the cc money went yeah. you know you ever drive by there that's where brand i'm like brandon paid for all that like they live much better than you do brandon <laughs> i paid for that I paid for that. <laughs> you know so um but patreon like like when i want to support a game developer to make their game every month versus one kickstarter so this is what happens right is Kickstarter started doing these things where you'd, you'd fund a game. But like anything else, you need more funds. Like you thought you might need, say, 20 grand to make the game. Really, you need like 20 grand a year to make that game. So Patreon becomes very valuable that you can show constant progress, let people get all the assets, and every month they can join in. But it's slowly, right? Everyone starts to find le more ways to do less effort to get your money monthly. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, I have an opinion. Pay me to sit here and talk <laughs> for 20 minutes a day. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, mm, just to talk for 20 minutes. You're telling me you're not going to sit on. So if I don't pay you to talk about movies for 20 minutes a day, you're telling me you're not going to sit on the phone with your friends for an hour every other day. You know what I mean? complaining right. about movies and if you just broke those conversations up for 20 minute increments you would have had the same rambling conversation it's not like they're doing it to produce tons of content or you know people that would normally maybe Brandon like I like to you know put on a Pikachu outfit and run around with my hairy legs and shit I don't know y'all want to see it you know <laughs> you know so pay me it's just like it's become something a little bit more and then everyone thinks that that's the get rich quick scheme right so it's like Tell me, why don't you do the Patreon, Rob? Just do the Patreon. It's like, because you're going to, I don't, I make things, make them available, pull back. Make things, make them available, pull back. You know, I wanted to get in on this one. Maybe next time. Maybe I'll never see you again. I miss some, I, that's how I work. And it's just because slow and steady, I want a consistent career. You know, and I get there's people being much more successful than me, but at what cost? I don't know. One thing I know is true, folks. When it comes to artists and money, never believe they're doing as well as the, the, the artists that are doing really well don't flaunt it. I'm telling you right now. All you right. can see an artist right now on Patreon that's making $6,000 a month and they may have a giant opiate habit that they're not telling you about. <laughs> and if they are, seek professional help. Please. Right. You know, like, I'm being dead serious. Like, like, 
artists don't really need six thousand dollars a month to live. What are they doing with all that money? How is you can't produce more art because you're getting more money? I'm not a fucking vending machine for art, right? Just keep shoving money in the art. Gets boop, 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 you know, like there's only so much you can make. So great, but at what? Like then, I, what do I gotta draw? Oh, I gotta draw this stuff. You want to see more of this? Then and then, you know, after seven years, you're like, I got all this money, but I never got to do what I really want. And artist problems. But I don't know. And then one day, there's a crash. See, the problem is my career, Brandon, I've already experienced two major market crashes. Mm -hmm. Video game magazines and retail clothing. You know? I was working at a video game magazine as the artist. Play Magazine already been around. They were hitting their, their what, 10 year mark? The 100th issue and the market bam! Just fucking sucker punch. Knock the whole industry out to the point where you can't go get a game magazine at any store now. <laughs> you know? And then retail, I mean, clothing, where I started out on, just was taking a hit over the same period. They overlapped, you know? And this magical thing happened on the internet, which I warned them about, was that people are going to get really good at printing their own t-shirts. And they're like, it'll never cut into us. It can't do the numbers. I'm like, no, but there can be more of them doing less numbers. So, you see a t-shirt you love, and it's Rick and Morty on the Millennium Falcon. It's not a real t-shirt. It's bootleg. It's up for 24 hours. They sell maybe 100 of those. Maybe they sell 1,000 of them. At retail, you need to sell tens of thousands of things. But they only need to sell 100, 50, whatever, in a 24-hour period. And then the next one's going to go up for another 24 hours. Then the next one's going to go up for another 24 hours. And the next one's going to go up. And so... All those people are doing it, and that all chips away at the money that would have gone to the three or four companies that were putting things at retail. And then now, none of those people have jobs. They call that disrupting the industry. You know, they're disrupting the industry. What they're doing is taking your jobs. They dirk a doosh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we got in that conversation. Oh, so Patreon. So what, what it is is when I get told by people that, this is how, this is the future. I'm like, the future is accelerating so quickly that that'll probably be the past by the time if you're ever able to catch on. You know, like the only way I've been able to navigate is to pull a little bit from everywhere and when one kind of is not doing well, the other three are supporting it or the other two. Or then maybe I'm down to like one. And if none of that's working, then I need to rethink, you know, the process. And that's how you keep mental sanity. You know, does that mean, you know, don't have to worry about your career if you don't have one, right? Like, it's like <laughs> smart, you know? Like, it's a great right. meme, right? Um, and that gets into that other question you had, too. What was the last question? Um, I see a lot of, you know, I see these artists getting fatigued and they, they quit. They want to quit. They give up. They say they're going to quit. And then they eventually come back in three weeks, four weeks. You know, they get this artist fatigue where they just kind of, hit their limit or think they've hit their limit and they just kind of give up push it to the limit do, 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 do. <laughs> you're talking about yourself brandon have you hit your limit no no for no, this no, podcast no, like we're yet, done it's fatigue I'm close i'm close rob i'm close do, do you think i just like to hear the sound of my own voice <laughs> <laughs> it's actually i don't it's because it's all up here but, uh, all right, so artists who have fatigue. You know, I have a friend, I think, recently went through this. Um, Jonathan Rector, friend of the show, put up a mm -hmm. episode yesterday. I sent him a note, personal note, saying, hey, man, you ever just want to shoot the shit? I'm always here for you. Power to you. But he put up a thing saying he's quitting social media, which, you know, is always... Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, you're like, all right, I get it, you know. You know yeah. South Park taught us. We all like to announce it. That's fun. But then he said, you know, he's taking a break from art. And then he gave this 10-minute explanation on his YouTube channel about why that is. And you'll find it, folks. Just go right there. And that could really hear the frustration in his voice. And, and he brought up a point, and these are his words, and I can't tell you what he was feeling, but I'll, you know, basically talk about something that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. And it's that he, after he started doing his own comic as a way to try to pitch himself to major companies to draw comics. He has a full time job, but he wanted to do this. So, the best way he found to do it that still produced a result that he could get something out of it if nothing happened was to make his own comic, which was Jessup King, which is a cool comic, by the way. Well, mm -hmm. finally, Marvel got back to him and sent him a script to do some test pages. And he was like, here we go. I'm going to draw all this stuff. And somewhere along that fucking phase, he was like, What's this all for? 
<laughs> like, I'm not making light of that. It's just I've been there, folks. You gotta right. understand. Like I've been through this. He's like, what? I don't even care about. Them. Why am I drawing Doctor Doom in a hundred bots for what? What? What is my life? What? I got kids, or you know, maybe he. You know, he said he went outside and smelt the grass. <laughs> it's like I just picked up grass and put it on my face, and I get it. I get it. You know, and I'll tell you what I think that is from my own experience. I can't tell you what's going on in John's head, right? Because um, mm -hmm. I can barely tell you what's going on in mine. But I've been there. And uh, to bring it back to food, uh, we as humans need a varied diet. Now, you could feed your cat and your dog on the same kibble. Well, you really want to rotate between two or three kibbles, right? But even if we rotated between two or three different types of broccoli, we must have a varied diet. We eat the same fucking thing. You're going to go crazy and die. Art is the same way. You got to feed the inner artist. The creative hunger, you know, burns, right? And it's always hungry. And if you just shove in the same food all the time, um, you're going to throw up eventually or, or get sick. So, uh, if he's been making, like, if you're, like, I got a point where I was always working on Marvel t shirts, right? Mm -hmm. And, Always working on, and when I say T-shirts, I wasn't dragging like other people's art to shirts and put my name on it. Like I'm drawing shit, rendering things, but I'm always doing things that require, you know, a certain level. It's got to get approved, and there's fucking meetings, and you know, make it dumber, please, Rob. Make it more dumber. Sure, <laughs> like make it dumber. Like you drew too well, <laughs> quote unquote. You're drawing too well. Draw worse, and <laughs> it's true. So to come home and do that as well made no sense. Um, so I started doing things like Mosaic, my own books. Um, uh, it have, and so that's how I kind of started to deal with that. It happened to me again when I was doing nothing but digital art for Dave over at Drawing Comics. I was doing this Dead Junior comic, doing digital art all the time. And everything had to be so perfect and clean. I just said fuck it I, one night i started painting that joker i did that saucy joker it's with the saucy uh -huh. stuck him and what i found was is as an artist you're always going to have two professional lives the main one and the one for you and so if you have a full-time job making art whatever that is if you're at work and you're working on my little pony when you come home the art for you needs to be a hundred percent not that <laughs> if you're at work and you're modeling environments Right for World of Warcraft all day. That's your job. You're doing trees and stones and and houses. When you come home, uh, you need to physically sculpt with clay and only sculpt people. Something completely different, or paint people like or something totally different. All right. Because you will eventually crack, and it will break you. It's broken me. It's broken friends of mine. I. Think it broke John a little bit. He'll get all real. He'll believe we all come back. What what it really is is that version of you broke, and there's a new version of you inside, like a little. What are those Russian dolls? There's like a little one. <laughs> yeah. Right? The right, there's a one dolls. inside of one inside of one. There's that, and and what it is is you thought you wanted this one thing. Like I always thought I was gonna actually. I never really had a good plan. <laughs> you know, like I had this vision that I was going to make a certain amount of money after college because I had to or I couldn't pay back my student loans. And I always wanted to work in game magazines. And somehow I managed to make that happen. And then I was like, I'm going to do comics too. And what I found out was I hate drawing comics for people. I hate drawing comics for people, Brandon. I hate it. Yes. I hate going on this panel. I got to fulfill their vision. Fuck their vision. I don't have it. I have the ability to do it. I don't want to, Kyle. You ever see that episode of uh, South Park <laughs> where Kyle's trying to get Cartman to help him save the, the trees or the whales or something? And he goes, but you have plenty of time. He goes, I know, Kyle. I just don't care. <laughs> yeah. I have plenty of time to do it. It's just, it's just, it, and plus, you know, it's very difficult when you have a job that is paying well artistically and then you have to come home and try 10 times harder for chicken scraps. And I'm going to be honest, man, like it's this stuff, you know, most comic artists I know, they're averaging $30,000 a year, you know, with the hope that they'll have those original pages they can resell and then they'll make another 30 grand. That makes you 60, 60 grand a year is still, you know, 
this economy, you know, you're going to have to move. And we don't have to live in a nice place. You can go live somewhere fucked up. That's great. I can go move all my expensive equipment to a real fucked up neighborhood in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) They always try to, like, rationalize it to you in some way. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think when you hit that point, folks, what you got to do is stop. You got to stop everything immediately. You know, don't make an announcement. Try not to make an announcement. John did. I always say don't make an announcement because you probably change your mind and it's just it's ridiculous. People are going to get tired of hearing you go through that. Um, but mm. just just take a break. You know, I get it's difficult. Like I think you had a Patreon. Um, I have some friends that have done that too. Like they have Patreons and like I'm not going to do anything. And then all of a sudden, people are like, "Why have I been giving you money and you're not making things?" Like that's another reason I don't like people paying me money monthly because <laughs> that I owe them more shit. I owe you. So. Right. Um, Especially with comics, man. If it's your own comic, what if this takes me a little bit to figure out, you know? Uh, Jonathan Rector. I'll show you his YouTube. I was going to have the links in the info, but we'll just go there right now. So I'll show you John's. Because I subscribe, folks. So if we go to my right here, check out John. We'll scroll down here to Jonathan Rector. Give him some love, man. Right here. And this right here, updates and goodbye from now would be the one right here. It's a good site. He's a good dude, man. If you have him on the cast, you can see the interview I did with him on the podcast. On uh, where is where is the interview I did with him? We did we did a really good one actually? Uh, let me go into Creator Studio. Hmm. God damn it! View channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they always make this shit not fucking intuitive <laughs> you know so if we go to the podcast and if it's as you can tell people we do not prepare huh Very i'm bad. not gonna keep telling people i don't prepare they know this so i'm prepared i could talk about anything i'm just not gonna have it all queued up so where's the jonathan rector interview right here so why is this one i have a name brandon I'm not happy about that. What's going on with that one? Um, I could tell you why. The one that says Sketchcraft Live below Sketchcraft mm-hmm. 67. Mm-hmm. Because I uploaded it. You didn't like it. So you re-uploaded with the new one. And the but new then why is this one hour 51 and that's 57 minutes? I don't know. I have to go back and look. Most yeah. likely you changed it and then didn't want me to delete it. Or you did one yeah, without me. Definitely my... I did this one chat with Jonathan Rector. But we didn't really get into his life a little bit. or the pot. So there's two of them. This one's more about his comic Jessup King and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, this conversation extends past him. You're all going to get to this point folks where you, you want to not do what you're doing. And I always say like, do something completely different outside of what you're doing all the time. And then bring back the things you learn to this one. And then this one to that one. This is why I do commissions where I'll use color pencil and then I do watercolor and then I go back and do the digital colors and then I'll do digital landscape painting. And then I'll come back. Like I have this little like, circle that I try to make, right? Right, This little circle of traditional digital painting, writing, traditional digital painting, writing, traditional digital painting, writing, maybe graphic design, traditional digital painting. And look, it's it's madness. You know, at the end of the day, it, it ticking those little things off in a constant little circle um, and then coming over here some nights and just complaining for four hours while I'm drawing. <laughs> what was it the other night I was drawing that I think when I was drawing the Megavisions cover, someone was like, dude, you just fucking went on like a four-hour rant, and I was drawing the whole time, you know? It's like, this fucking shit sucks, this motherfucker. And, you know, but shit's still getting done, so, you know, well, however ways. But yes. that will help, you know, and to understand it's normal. Don't think it isn't normal. It's okay to stop. You're not going to lose all your followers. If I don't post for fucking a month, I'll lose everyone. You're not going to stop it, you know? It's, Look, if you think you're going to lose followers because you stopped posting artwork, understand this. Andy Signori, the creator of Screen Junkies, straight up got fired from his job for years of sexual harassment. Still has 44,000 followers on Twitter. You know, they're not going <laughs> to try to understand. People just forget they're following you half the fucking time. You know, <laughs> so, like, don't feel this internet pressure. Like the internet's pushing you to make things or they're all going to go away. I this is getting a little personal, right? I'll get just a little personal. Um, I had a parent who left me on a doorstep on Christmas 
uh, back in 87. I'm fine. I don't need the sympathies. I'm just saying. I've already gone through all the therapy. It's all done. I don't have the abandonment issues. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> There's a parent after the parent. You understand what I mean, Brandon? One way or the other. There's always the next rung, you know? So don't let it get to you. And don't let two, just because you had a plan, so you always want to draw Spider-Man, and then one day you get to draw Spider-Man, and you're like, I fucking hate this. Like, it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not the Spider-Man's a problem. It's all this other shit that goes with it, you know? And you're like, yeah, you know? And you're like, well, some guys are good at it. They are, and maybe some of them aren't. You know, like, we don't really know people. You don't really know. Like, even here, I'm pretty honest, but, you know, like, I'm not going to tell you how I'm feeling because I ate a burrito. You know what I mean? I'm not going to get There's certain things I'm not getting into. I don't really know. Um, I definitely would fucking tell you if something was a colossal waste of money because I don't want people spending time and money on things that I when I know it was a fucking ruse and you know they're gonna come back like should I get this equipment like, yeah it'll give you superpowers like you know like okay don't you spend. are on a tangent sir <laughs> yeah I know I know I know well I'm trying to eat up a little bit of time here so is there anything <laughs> else Brandon no we are at the 11 or 11 I'm tired we're at the 112 mark all right it's been a long day people I oh, appreciate you. everyone listening. My... So Brandon said he only had one more day of this two days ago. How many more days of this do you have? <laughs> I was I said that last night thinking it was fr- I have one more day of over overtime that I go in early tomorrow and stay during the day and then I have the two weeks of no overtime because of holidays and such and have to go to California to see such as boys. and such as. But then after we'll see, but it'll get me back to more of a normal schedule where I can get more stuff done. But it's been kicking my ass to where like, I'm just like, what day is it? Oh shit. It's only Wednesday. Yeah. Well, Brandon's going to help me record a game cave development update tomorrow night. Right, Brandon? I sure am. So hang around for that. Um, I will be doing color pencils during the day. Uh, Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow at the very latest got to color this fucking thing and i get the other ones done um how do i feel after eating a burrito uh fat sweaty but they're good (laughs) burritos are tasty i do love them i love burritos i do love them um i need to i need to i just got done doing this cover and even though i want to get right into the next thing i found that anytime you kind of push out a I hate to say it, a baby, a child. And tell me, tell me, you, tell me you create something, it's best to take the next day off if you have that luxury. So commissions, you know, people pay for them. They want their stuff, but they also want it done right. Right, Brandon? Correct. So, so nah. I'm more than likely 98% certain that I'm just going to go and clean my kitchen and play some Mario Auto so you get a good night's sleep and in the morning get cranking on that Wolverine and then tomorrow night we're going to update on the Game Cave so I can update that Kickstarter when people like if they forget. Brandon, is there anything else you want to mention? Uh, no, just a thank you to all the people who follow me on Instagram lately from the cast. You know, I get a it, I, it goes in spurts where people will follow me a whole chunk of like, you know, 10, 12 people at a time and then you know, it just depends on what we post, but I appreciate all the people leaving me comments and likes and just follow me lately from the cast. So it's always nice that somebody out there enjoys the mega potato. And if anybody else would like to follow me on Instagram, it's at lead heavy, L E A D heavy links are below. And we, I have all the links down there for Rob's Etsy store, his Instagram and all those wonderful and things. Speaking of social media really quick, I did share a picture. I rarely do this folks. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not promoting this to tell me thank you for I forgot to tell people to not say this, but so tomorrow's Veterans Day, and uh, so I post this. This is me uh, when I was 19, learning how to draw this, in the army. This right? one you're sitting on the floor. Yeah, it's a couch. beanbag. It's actually two beanbags. I stack up on one another. So uh, yeah, there we go. someone came over, I can share them, or I can stack them up and have a nice extra. There's Look my coffee. That. Nice and shaved. Got a little yeah. bit of muscles. Yeah. Clean shaven. Even at 100 push-ups a day for a year or two, that's the most definition I'm getting out of these arms, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Just not a muscle guy, you know? Like it doesn't. Like me. You see the Pokemon Stadium back here? This, that's Street Fighter Alpha 2 Sega Saturn right there. Uh-huh. Right, That's Ninja Turtles, the first Ninja Turtles DVD right there. 
I believe that is unbreakable. Uh, so you were what, 38 in this picture? How about 30? You look so adult. 19. <laughs> I know you like that. So, uh, yeah, 2000. Yeah, and old at the same time. So Benjamin Button like. I know, right? It's like the last time. You know? I mean, I've aged fairly well, but we're all going to get old. So it happens. But please don't tell me thank me for my service. I forgot to tell people don't do that. That's not why I, I do it. Um, I actually only posted it because my uncle keeps forgetting I, I'm alive. And so every year he likes to post, you know, he thinks all of his brothers um, that he hates and my grandfather, whom he hated for the service because he feels bad he never joined. And he always forgets. So I, I just always post that back to him. And he gets annoyed. <laughs> so, and I was like, yeah, I'll share it. You know, I think I shared the photo once three years ago on the Instagram. Yeah. Thank you for being my friend. Do, 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 do. So, all right, everybody, I'm going to get to it. Thanks for hanging out. Let's give a shout out to the chat room. Napalma, Shadow Kid. Shadow Kid, Comic Legend, yeah. Frankie Lynch, yeah. Chris Dibburn, mm-hmm. ugh, Kyle Wright, and Jamal. Mm-hmm. Daisuke. And, yeah, Daisuke. They all got, and Crusher Jr., they all have birthdays this month. Like Romper Room. You know what that is, right, Brandon? <laughs> what is it? Nope. He doesn't know what Robert Room is. It's before your time. All right, everybody. Talk to you later. Peace. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Sketch Rift. You don't have to go home, but you're probably already home. They they said that to me the first day in the Army. <laughs> you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. And I was like, but I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Please, can I just go home? Ah, shit. Oh, oh fuck. I hate it home anyway. Alright, everybody. Peace. I'm out.